In January, we covered here how the self-described Freedom Convoy protests in Ottawa, Canada against pandemic health measures and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government. Big trucks and other vehicles blockaded roads, including one in front of Parliament, which paralyzed the nation's capital and slowed trade at U.S.-Canada border crossings for weeks. Trudeau was forced to testify before a public inquiry on his decision to invoke the Emergencies Act to clear out protesters. The emergency power had never been used before. The inquiry revealed the Biden administration's large role in shutting down protests. Frantic calls were made by Washington to Ottawa, including from Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg to his Canadian counterpart, Transport Minister Omar Al-Gabara. Al-Gabara testified that Buttigieg initiated the call and the interaction was, quote, unusual. President Biden also had direct calls with Trudeau, reportedly alluding to truckers threatening to disrupt the Super Bowl in Los Angeles. The White House also requested daily updates on on the protests, and three days later, the Emergencies Act was invoked. Joining us now to discuss is spokesperson for the Benjamin Dichter Freedom Convoy and author of Honking for Freedom, the trucker convoy that gave us hope. BJ Dichter, welcome. There's the book. There Thank you so Thank much you for very joining much us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, our pleasure. So tell us, uh, tell us what the book's about and uh, why this uh, cause is so important to you and what, what people need to know about it. Well, the book itself is about all the good and positive things that occurred during the Freedom Convoy that many in the legacy media uh, chose to ignore intentionally. And uh, it's really quite heartwarming because it shows people from across the political spectrum coming together, irrespective of identity, political worldview. We all agreed at that point that we need to come together and support each other around this movement, which was about peace, love, unity and freedom. And when I put together the initial messaging for the convoy, I hearken back to my teenage years, going to Grateful Dead concerts and to Fish concerts and you know, understanding that culture of loving each other and having people who have completely different you know, worldviews, but we can agree to love and support one another. In this case, it was for a cause to remove the data tracking app and the mandates that caused those apps. Yeah, I, BJ, I have to say, like, it, the, the, watching that, covering that, reporting on it um, from afar, it was it was one of these moments where it was so clear to me what the right side was. I mean, I felt that we were watching the biggest labor action in certainly, it, you know, it, that I had ever seen. Um, and immediately the response from the powers that be, from Trudeau, from government, from the mainstream media here in the U.S. and certainly in Canada was, these people are Nazis. And it was just a perfect encapsulation of something I think happens a lot, which is um, whenever the class divide threatens to be exposed, they call the people who ha are on the wrong side of it bigots. And I, I guess my question to you would be, I know what it was like to watch that. It was horrifying. What was it like to experience that? Well, let me answer by pulling out, uh, you know, my, my Megan David, so you can all see that uh, me being a Nazi is, is definitely a stretch. Um, and I said in uh, one of the many interviews that unlike Prime Minister Blackface, some of us actually have relatives that are still buried in mass graves in Europe. And it's quite insulting and quite disgusting. But that's all they have, because there's never any policy, there's never any ideas. And in this, this particular instance, there was never even, even an attempt, an attempt to talk to us and reach out to us, because all branches of government were blaming each other, this is what we learned in the commission, and trying to defer responsibility to one another. And then when nothing was getting done, they just, you know, Pr Prime Minister uh, Blackface just brought down the, ha the hammer and decided it's time to crush the most peaceful protest in Canadian history, full of soup kitchens and bouncy castles and saunas and hot tubs and barbecues and all that sort of stuff. And the only um, violation that I could see the entire time was perhaps parking infringements. So this is what we've done now in Canada. When there's parking infringements, we introduce Canada's version of martial law. And it's come to the point that these people are so incompetent that they're dangerous. Yeah, it's really incredible, especially given how, at least in the U.S., you know, protesters were treated so differently depending on the cause. We had a whole summer of 
of outrage over uh, you know unjust uh, police uh, killings and this uh, you know marching protesting in the midst of the pandemic that was that was endorsed very tacitly very publicly even by health officials who otherwise were recommending people never leave their homes for any reason saying well well this is an important cause so go go forth but then when you had protests against the pandemic measures much later, or sometimes happening contemporaneously, this was treated like, you know, an existential threat to, to the health of, of people everywhere. People were going to die because of this. You'd have blood on your hands for condoning it. Um, ha, you know, have you taken note of the different way protesters were, were treated? Absolutely. And, you know, the people that were there protesting, our truckers, a large swath of them were either from the Sikh community or from Eastern European descent or, you know, recent immigrants from uh, Eastern Europe within the because a lot of those people uh, in trucking uh, in the company that I work with, it's mainly people from uh, from Poland and Belarus. So they understood the um, the encroachment of government that violates our rights to free speech. And, you know, I'll tell you something. When I came out of my testimony during the commission, there is a woman holding an LGBT flag uh, with a Hong Kong sign calling us terrorists. Benji, you're a terrorist. You're all terrorists and this and that. And you know what I did? I turned on my Instagram and I turned around and I said, don't be angry at her. The Freedom Convoy protected her right to free speech, just like it protects our right to free speech. She's probably a wonderful person, in my view, just very confused. So it's really scary that those in power not only have forgotten the values and the importance of free speech, but at the same time, they hold all the political power, but they play the victim card. You don't get it both ways. You don't get to be in power, but also claim to be the victim. But that's what that's the state of our politics um, in Canada and the US. And this is not a partisan thing. It's not about left versus right. This is about people in control who think they're entitled and anybody who speaks up to them or challenges them, they automatically declare themselves the victim. And that culture needs to stop. I think that's so beautiful what you just said, that the person calling you a terrorist, her free speech is the thing you were standing up for. Um, that You know, the irony there where, you know, you were protesting fascistic measures of demanding that people who spend 99% of their days alone in their trucks put something in their bodies that they didn't want to and that they didn't need, that you were protesting, you know, actual fascistic measures and you were called fascists. And then the fascism on the other side just amped up and amped up and, 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 and um, uh, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau's just systematic um, uh, attempt to deprive you of your civil rights, um, your civil liberties with the, invoking the Emergencies Act, which was completely unjustified. Um, did you foresee that happening when you guys went into it? I mean, in your book, Honking for Freedom, the trucker convoy that gave us hope, um, you, you talk in the beginning so beautifully, you describe how this came about. Um, tell us a little bit about that and tell us, did you foresee this happening? The, 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 the absolute... Um, um, uh, just complete breakdown of the government in terms of meeting your needs. Well, never accuse me of uh, believing that the government is in any way competent. That's, that's just kind of my worldview. My father was a teacher, so I've grown up around government, and uh, I, I'm a little bit skeptical, if you call it that. In terms of the organic movement growing this large, uh, I got to tell you, I tried. And when Tamara Leach called me, I said to her, uh, and we'd been friends for many years, I said, okay, Tamara, like, how big do you want it to be? Like, I can make it pretty big. I got a media <laughs> strategy that I think will work. And she said, let's go as big as we can make it. Now, did we imagine it would go global and there would be convoys in 30 plus countries? That would have been a little bit of a stretch or the $25 million that we total uh, raised of which 1.2 million was in Bitcoin. Uh, we wouldn't have imagined uh, that as well. So I think it was a success in that respect. But in terms of the Emergency Measures Act, and this is for our friends on the left and the right, Trudeau called the Emergency Measures Act on the federal level and froze our bank accounts, my bank accounts included. And by the way, not just bank accounts, credit cards, lines of credit, corporate account, everything. You couldn't transact at all. I couldn't buy myself a cup of coffee. But two days before the premier of uh, of ontario a conservative 
invoked the Emergency Measures Act two days prior to Trudeau. And this was at a time where this conservative, Doug Ford, you famously know his brother in the United States, uh, was moving towards introduced, introducing passports to go to the grocery store and to go get to go to the pharmacy. So, I, I mean, I don't I, I don't want to let people get away with on the, you know, the team blue, the conservative side that, oh, it's just Justin Trudeau. There's no question. Justin Trudeau is a serious, serious problem and should be nowhere near power. But I think the same is to be said for on the opposite end of the aisle on the provincial level. Hmm. B.J. Dichter, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about your book and your movement. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And we'll have more Rising right after this. Stay with us.